Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. So, to solve this problem for my solution, I'm going to first, let me rewrite uh, the equation right here. Now, to start, just by looking at this equation, what can we infer? Well, notice how we have x to the power of y minus something is equal to 17. And 17 is greater than 0, right? Meaning, x to the power of y is greater than y to the power of x. And this also must mean that x is greater than y, and y is greater than 0. So now that we know this, I'm going to rewrite my equation here, x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. And x to the power of y, I can rewrite this as x to the power of y to the power of 2 over 2, because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. And x to the power of y to the power of 1 is the same thing as x to the power of y. Now this, I can rewrite as x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2. Because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So I can switch these up. Now y to the power of x, I can also change this up as well. So y to the power of x, I can rewrite that as y to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2. And this, I can rewrite as y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. Now from here, remember my original equation was x to the power of y minus y to the power of x equals 17. Now I can replace x to the power of y with x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2, and y to the power of x with y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2 minus y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 17. Now I'm going to let x to the power of y over 2 equal to the variable a and y to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now if I substitute in a for x to the power of y over 2 and b for y to the power of x over 2, I get a squared minus b squared is equal to 17. Now if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. So a squared minus b squared, that's going to equal a plus b times a minus b is equal to 17. Now the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17, meaning that one of these two has to be 17 and the other one has to be 1. So just by looking at this, we can tell that a plus b is going to be 17 and a minus b is going to be 1 because a plus b is greater than a minus b, meaning a I have two equations, a plus b equals 17, and a minus b, b is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. a plus a is 2a, b minus b is 0, so these two cancel out, and 17 plus 1 is 18. So I get 2 equals 18, and if I divide both sides by 2, I get a is equal to 9. Now I can plug back in a for 9 into my original equation. So let's we could just do either one. I'm going to do a plus b equals 17. If I plug in a for 9, I get 9 plus b equals 17, meaning b is equal to 8. So a equals 9, b equals 8. And we can even check it over here. Let's plug both of these in. a is 9 minus b is 8, and 9 plus 8 does equal 1. So now that we know a is 9 and b equals 8, 
we can go back here and notice how we let x to the power of y over 2 equal a and y to the power of x over 2 equal b, meaning x to the power of y over 2 is equal to 9 and y to the power of x over 2 is equal to 8. So to solve this, let's first start by solving the first equation. So x to the power of y over 2 equals 9. I can first start by taking the power of 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of y is equal to 81. Now 81, I can rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4. Now I'm going to do the same thing to y to the power of x over 2. I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides, and then these two cancel out, so I get y to the power of x is equal to 64. Now 64, I can rewrite that as 4 to the power of 3. So I have x to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 4, and y to the power of x equals 4 to the power of 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, y, 4, x, 3, and over here, y, 4, x, 3, meaning x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4. So this is my solution to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 9 plus x to the power of 6 is equal to 36. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting this as x to the power of 3 times 3 plus x to the power of 3 times 2 is equal to 36. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 3 times 3 is going to equal x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And x to the power of 3 times 2 is going to equal x to the power of 3 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So if I substitute in y for x to the power of 3, I get y to the power of 3 plus y squared is equal to 36. And if I subtract 36 on both sides, I get y to the power of 3 plus y squared minus 36 is equal to 0. So to solve equations like these, we actually have to first find one solution to that equation and then use that one solution to find the remaining solutions. So how are we going to find that first solution? Well, the only way to actually do that is to just plug in values and see if they work. So we're going to first plug in x equals 1. And if x equals 1, we get 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 squared minus 36, which is equal to 2 minus 36, which does not equal 0. For x equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 squared minus 36, which is equal to 8 plus 4, which is 12 minus 36, which again does not equal 0. Now I have x equals 3, so I get 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 squared minus 36. 3 to the power of 3 is 29, or sorry, 27. 27 plus 3 squared is 9, so 27 plus 9 is 36. 36 minus 36 does equal 0, so this is right, and x equals 3 is the solution. So now that I have x, actually, sorry, this should be y y equals 3 as a solution, what I, what I have to do is divide y to the power of 3 plus y squared minus 36 with y minus 3. So to divide these two, I'm going to have to use synthetic division. And if you guys don't know what synthetic division is, I recommend watching a video on it. But basically, we have our coefficients of our 
numerator here, the first coefficient is one, the second one is one as well, we're supposed to have a y here because our exponents go in order, decreasing, and we don't have y to the power of one here, so we just say zero. And then finally, we have negative 36 at the end. And then our denominator, we have three. So now we're gonna drop down one. Three times one is three. One plus three is four. Three times four is 12. Zero plus 12 is 12. And three times 12 is 36. Negative 36 plus 36 is zero. So I have a remainder of zero. And these are gonna be my coefficients for my problem right here. I have x squared plus 4x plus 12. Sorry, this is actually y, y squared plus 4y plus 12, meaning that this is equal to y squared plus 4y plus 12. And also this means that y minus 3 times y squared plus 4y plus 12 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I get y minus 3 is equal to 0, meaning y equals 3. And we already know this. And I get y squared plus 4y plus 12 is equal to 0. And to solve this, we have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 4, and c is 12. So I get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. b squared is 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. And this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 48 over 2, which is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 32 over 2. And this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 32 times the square root of negative 1, which is the same thing as i over 2. And the square root of 32, this can be simplified to the square root of 16 times 2, which is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 2, which is equal to 4 root 2. So this is going to equal negative 4 plus or minus 4 root 2 i over 2. And if I divide both, both of these terms by 2, I get negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 2 i. So I have three solutions of y. However, we aren't done yet because remember, I let x to the power of 3 equal to y. So I get x to the power of 3 is equal to 3. And I also get x to the power of 3 is equal to an imagined number, which we actually can't do. So we can't use this equation. So the only solution I can use is y equals 3. And to solve this, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. The cube root of x to the power of 3 is x. So I get x is equal to the cube root of 3. So this is my solution to this problem. And remember, whenever you're solving problems like these, use synthetic division. So you, can, or you always have to find one solution first and use that other solution to find the remaining solutions.